Today we are going to explore one of the most complex variant of the CQRS with multiple databases, event sourcing, messaging and integrations. This implementation is suitable for complex and scalable system under the huge load. I'm talking about system like Amazon, Netflix, Atlassian and more. For the basic theory and simple CQRS variant implementation, please check out the link to video in the description below. Let's check the flow and components in this CQRS variant. There are following components. API client. It can be a front-end application or other service in the case of service-to-service -service communication. REST API or web service sends requests to our application. Every endpoint calls read or write side according to its purpose. That means for HTTP method get will be called a query side and for HTTP method post put delete will be called a command side. The communication with query and command side logic can be covered by a mediator pattern. The read side provides reading data from the read storage that contains reading models that are often tailored to the given use case. Read storage is typically a well scalable database that contains data structure and data prepared for the most efficient reading. Read storage synchronization component. The purpose of this component is to reflect changes from write storage to read storage. This component is typically listening on a messaging system queue or topic and updating data when an event occurs. Let's move back to the write side. The write side is mostly more complex than the read side. It may contain a business logic and domain model that is more general than a read model. Data are typically persisted in the relational format or as a sequence of state-changing events in the case of event sourcing. We will talk about event sourcing a bit later. Write storage data structures are optimized for business logic processing. Write storage synchronization component. The purpose of this component is to reflect changes from write storage to read storage. This component typically sends changes as events into the messaging system. And the last component is a messaging system that is responsible for scalable asynchronous data exchange from the write to the read side. And much more in the event-driven microservices architecture. This video is part of the series about building real-world event-driven microservices system for tattoo studios and hair salons. You can find the whole playlist on my channel. It's a step-by-step -step implementation of the real-world event-driven microservices application which is currently in production and running in Kubernetes without any issue. Let's describe our technological stack. Read database, MongoDB, write database, PostgreSQL used as an event sourcing storage, messaging, Apache Kafka with Dapper as messaging technology abstraction, API and logic, Microsoft.net. But feel free to choose technology which is best for your system. I mentioned event sourcing, which is in short, way to store your data. It has some drawbacks and benefits, like everything in the whole world. The point is that data are persisted as a collection of events. These events are replayed during the materialization of the aggregate route. There are many use cases where event sourcing fits perfectly fine, but there are maybe more use cases where it's not suitable. I can prepare video especially about event sourcing with theory and code as well. But today we will cover this topic practically in the code. Now let's jump on it. As I said, our event-driven microservices application is for tattoo studios all over the world. Every service has a different architecture and technological stack. I'm going to show you a tattoo design microservice. This microservice has implemented exactly what I'm talking about. CQRS, multiple databases, event sourcing, messaging and synchronization. Every magic begins in a controller. Let's see our tattoo design controller, an endpoint for changing description. There are multiple ways to communicate with the application and domain logic of your system. I prefer the mediated pattern way, like in our code here. This API is simplified without request and response object, mapping and so on. It will be covered in some next video. Interesting endpoint is change design descriptions. 
Next stop is the Change Design Descriptions command handler. We have DB context extensions for retrieving and materializing our aggregate route from the event log. All events are replied. It can be used as a snapshot for better performance, but it's out of scope of this video. The next step is to set a new description. The description is changed and the new design description change event is created and stored in the event list of the aggregate route. And now it's time to save our data to the database. We can resolve it generally for all aggregate routes in the DB context save method. Let's check the code. There is an iteration of domain events stored in the aggregate route. Every event is persisted in the event log. In our simple case, the event log is represented by a table in the PostgreSQL database. There are many options on how to persist your events. There are many different types of structures and databases as well. The last important step is to convert domain events into the integration events and publish them into the messaging system, which is Apache Kafka in our case. We can directly use our table with events for publishing them because of event sourcing. But without event sourcing, you should use the Outbooks pattern. You can use the Listen to Yourself pattern as well, or any other way to ensure that your messages will be published at least once. In our simple case, we just publish domain event via the mediator in process messaging, and the general event integration handler does following. Convert domain event to integration event and publish it into the Apache Kafka. Let's take a quick look at the publish events code. As you can see, domain events are wrapped into the integration events. We are using Dapper as messaging technology abstraction and Mediator library as an internal pub sub system. You should add a background job for processing failed or unprocessed messages. Now let's check the processing of integration events and read database synchronization. There is a simple ASP.NET Core hosted service that subscribes to Apache Kafka topics. As you can see, we are using Apache Kafka without Dapper, just for the demo purpose. When a new event occurs, we will process it as a create, update or delete operation in the read database, which is MongoDB in our case. And now we have an idea about the implementation of event-driven microservices with CQRS, with multiple databases, event sourcing, messaging and integrations. Let's take a quick look how it works in the real system. Our system is hosted on Kubernetes in the Azure AKS. Lens is a great UI tool for your Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, there are multiple pods for our microservices, web application and also API gateway. Our Tattoo Design microservice pod contains two containers, one for the application and one for Dapper as sidecar. And there are other systems as well, Apache Kafka as our messaging system, Keyclock as our identity management, MongoDB as our read database, PostgreSQL as our write database, and other components like Nginx Ingress Controller. The write database is PostgreSQL and here is the structure for event sourcing. As you can see, there are many events of the one aggregate route, which is the design entity in our case. We are using Apache Kafka as our messaging system. Kafka is used for synchronization of the reading database as well. I am using open source Provectus Labs Kafka UI for a quick look to Kafka. The read database is MongoDB and here is an example of the one document. Now I am going to change some data to show you how it works. As you can see, there is an integration with Keyclog Identity and Access Management. I am going to sign in and select our testing customer. Let's see the current state. Here is our write database and the change description event, which contains exactly the same value as in our form. Let's check Apache Kafka, last message and the same value as well. And finally, here is our read database with the fresh value. Now I will change the description. CQRS. And let's check our system again. CQRS right side storage. Messaging system.
CQRS read database. And that's all for today. We covered just basic concept of complex variant of CQRS. There are many ways how to implement specific part of our system. Some parts were simplified and should be implemented with more details in mind. Another very interesting topic is eventual consistency, which can be solved by many ways, but I will keep it for later.